four is dealing with mean value. So mean value has the same stipulations as roles, except for you don't care about checking these two. OK, mean value, our first question is, is x to the third continuous? Is x to the third continuous? Can you plug any number into x to the third and make it non-continuous? No, it's a polynomial. There's no way to make that thing not continuous. So this is a yes, or a check mark, or whatever you want to just say, I, I checked it. I'm good. Next, is it differentiable? Well, let's derive it. Isn't that 3x squared? Is this equation, is there anything we can mess this equation with up? Basically, think of this as, is this equation continuous? It sounds stupid. But if this is continuous, good. You take the derivative and see if the derivative is continuous is basically saying, is it differentiable? Because if the derivative is continuous, then it's also differentiable. It's kind of a way of thinking of it. So is this always differentiable? Yeah, there's nothing that can malfunction this. So we're good again here. Are our two stipulations taken care of? Yes. Now, what if all of a sudden this was discontinuous at, say, 4? Would that matter? No, because there's four in the interval. Got it? What if it was discontinuous, but it, or, or what, sorry, what if it was not differentiable, but it wasn't, it was outside the interval? That's okay, it doesn't matter. Or what if it wasn't continuous, but it was outside the interval? You can ignore that. For instance, this one, see how it was not continuous at zero? If my interval didn't include zero, could I have kept going? Yeah. But since this was in my interval, I had to stop. Okay, so we have our first two stipulations taken care of. So our last thing on mean value is we have to find the slope, though. Instead of setting it equal to zero, like we did here, we have to set this derivative equal to the slope. And here's what I mean. First of all, we need to find f of zero and f of one. We need to find the outputs for these two values. Let's see why in a second. So we're going to find slope. And to find slope, don't you need two points? So plug 0 into the original. What do you get? And then plug 1 into the original, you get, OK, those are hard points. So it's 0, 0, and 1, 1. Most of you can look at that and tell me my slope is 1. Let's just calculate it for the sake of seeing it. This is an easy slope. You need to find the slope. You understand it's 1 minus 0 over 1 minus 0? Do you understand the slope between these two points is 1? Do you understand? My next question is, where does this derivative, 3x squared, going to equal a slope of 1. We want to find out where does this derivative have a slope of 1? Because 1 is the slope of the two mean. It's the mean slope. This is your mean, average slope of the graph on the interval. So we want to know where does the derivative equal that 1? Should my answer come up between 0 and 1? Yeah. Yes, because that's the whole point of mean value. There's a point on the interval due to our stipulations. Okay, so solve this first, divide by 3. And then we're going to what? Square root both sides. Now, there's two answers. Which one of these is in the interval? The positive. Is that actually an interval? Yeah, the square root of 1 third is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. Do we care about the negative answer? No. You know what? Some of you will take the negative answer and include it. It's not part of your interval. So my answer is just the square root 1 third, because all we care about is our interval. That's the only one in the interval. The negative one is not in the interval. Thus, this crazy number, decimal, whatever it is, is where the slope of this graph 
is 1. And 1 is the mean on the interval. If you were to graph this, it'll make a little bit more sense. 0, 0 is right here. 1, 1 is right here. Do you guys understand a, a third graph looks something like this? And so if you graph this line, that's your secant line. That's your average slope. Do you understand there's a point somewhere here where it has that same slope? And that point is x blank. Now, if I wanted to find my y value for the coordinate, could you just plug this back into my original and find the y value? It doesn't usually ask for that. But if I wanted the y value where I get that slope, that would be it. 